the rest of the story. George rushed in breathless. We have a problem, he panted. Leonard looked up from his paperwork. It's Capone, said George. He wants something from us. Capone, that's right, Roaring Twenties Chicago mob boss Al Capone. And in Chicago, when Al wanted something, either you gave it to him or he'd take it. Too ponderous to consider for such a small businessman as Leonard and George, why in the world did this happen to happen now, just as the partners were beginning to see a little success? They had started most of a year ago with only $27.50. They'd put $5 down on a beat-up second-hand Ford delivery truck. They used the remaining $22.50 to buy nuts and pretzels. Anybody in Chicago wanting nuts and pretzels would find Leonard and George at their door. Now, the biggest market for nuts and pretzels turned out to be the Prohibition-era speakeasies. And who ran them? Oh, you bet, Big Al. The Capone establishments were lucrative and uncomplaining customers for many months. The partner's burgeoning food company soon expanded their inventory to include sandwich bread and cigarettes. Everybody was happy. Then one day Capone asked for something Leonard and George could not deliver. Something neither had ever heard of, in fact. And so began, it seemed, the end. Leonard reflected on the road that had led them here, started pining for hometown Wells, Minnesota. He had left home age 12 to work the grain harvests in the Great Plains, and he was 17 when he hopped a freight to Chicago in 1921. For the next few years, Leonard worked as many as four jobs at one time. His main job was steeplejack. That is, he built and painted and repaired the steeples and the smokestacks of the big brawny town by the lake. And then he met George Gabora. The ambitious young men counted the cash in their pockets and pooled it and became a food company. The American dream was coming alive. But then the mob stepped in. Proprietors of the Speaks had said, Give us this, or we take our business elsewhere. And Leonard and George, they didn't even know what this was. But to keep their business going, they sure enough found out. They discovered what this newfangled food product was, the thing that Al Capone wanted. They decided that they would, they would make it if they had to. That particular food product gradually became the cornerstone of a success that neither Leonard nor George could ever, ever have imagined. For once upon an offer one dared not refuse, there was a mob a boss and two young fellows in a frying vat, and the dynamics of that particular combination soon evolved in American tradition. For Capone's request of the young men who were delivering snack food to his speakeasies was potato chips. Al loved potato chips. Before today, you've doubtless never met George Gavora or Leonard Jap. But every visit to the grocery store, even still, you see the emblem and the name that came of their conundrum, Jay's. Jay's potato chips. Only now you know the rest of the story.